Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to GDS. Uh, this year we are introducing the Arc Light system. Architecture Arc stands for Auditorium Retail Commercial. GDS has been in the industry for quite a few years doing innovative niche solutions. And we looked at the industry and in a very age old problem of how do you bring solid state lighting into auditorium. And there's some big reasons why that hasn't happened over the last, well, for the last few years. That's colour temperature, reliability, and the dimming side of it. Rich and I went around to see all the consultants in the UK in February to go around with a prototype 9 cell, which is our arc dimble LED lights. Talk about the colour intensity, the levels of light, the CRI and the quality, and also the dimming, and say, is this something that you would want to do? Because traditionally in our industry, the consultant doesn't always get involved in that side of the job. And the result, the, certainly the information, the feedback we got from them was, this is something that's really needed. And if you think you can crack this, then we're very interested you take that on. So Rich and I took that as an indication to really give that a go. So for the last six months, we've then been developing the finer side of the ARC system. And we've done two installations in August. One is in the Hall for Cornwall and Truro, which you have in front of you. And one is in the ICC, which is a test site in Hall 3, which is testing between now and December. Subject to that test, it will then roll out. We've also got several projects, well, many projects ongoing. So then to talk you through the system, um, basically we have, we try to approach it with a, a retrofit idea, because in our industry you have very old venues, let's take a, let's take a Frank Matcham Theatre for example, and they don't want to change the face of the building, but they want to go to solid state lighting. So we've looked at that in terms of including a wireless control, which means you can take out the halogen or the incandescent, change it with the solid state, but not have to rewire the building. And again, no one else seems to have taken that approach. Uh, and that's been a very challenging thing to take on. We didn't actually know if that would actually work. No one seems to have really tried it on that level. So to achieve that, you have basically have mains to the 8-cell, for example. Then inside here, we have a wireless carrier and an aerial built in. So you change over the main supply in the building, put this in, install a transmitter, and that then gives you a wireless network. So wireless... The key, yeah. the key thing to note here is that each light is a transceiver so not only does it receive it also transmits so if you're working in a large venue each light actually repeats the data for you uh, and this is done with no latency so so by introducing that so that means we can now provide a realistic uh, reliable no latency dimming in an auditorium like the hall for cornwall which we installed beginning of august and the results have been that it all dims down together no latency anywhere and it's built into the existing infrastructure of the building haven't had to rewire it, and we haven't changed any side of the physical look of it. So that worked really well. Um, within the range, we've introduced the 8-cell, which is a high bay, high level fitting. It's 10,000 lumens come out of this fitting, um, with beam angles of 19, 24, and 37. Then we're also doing a single cell version, which is recessed for below balconies. Here we have two different types. There's the smaller one, which again is used in the Hall for Cornwall and another slightly larger one which can either have a 20 watt chip or a 40 watt chip so giving you flexibility for different heights of balconies this has been developed for larger beam angles so this is uh, 19 24 37 same optics as this we've developed this one for 60 degree and 80 degree because we've identified there's a need for under stalls areas which are very low to get a really good coverage then we're also splitting this in the middle and doing this as a four cell unit as well as an eight cell so 5,000 lumen output into different areas. A couple of things that we've also done bespoke with the range to think about the auditorium solution, what's the consultant want, what does the end user want, more importantly. So with this system, you're able to address every fitting individually on your, on your network. So that now allows the auditorium or the, the theatre to say for rehearsal mode, we don't want any of the balconies lit, we don't want any of the stalls lit, we just want down the front for the production desk and, and obviously maybe some walkways. You can have latecomers setting so when the house light comes down to zero, the late, just the aisles are lit up for five more minutes. When they're not using the auditorium at all, but everyone walks through them, most people tend to leave the auditorium lights on all day. This will allow you to leave on just, just the walkthrough that people use in that building without changing anything else in the system. Uh, is addressing? Is addressing a set? Uh, a piece of software which allows you to go and look at the nodes on the system and then patch those to each DMX channel. It's all done wireless. 2.4 gigahertz wireless 
wireless control, but it's working on channel 24 to channel 26. So it's way out of the way of the normal wireless uh, computer networks. Um, part of the ICC test is to uh, look at how that works with very heavy trade show, such as like an IT trade show. Um, that's ongoing testing, but so far it's really favorable. It's a very reliable system. Also with the transmission nodes, which is where the data from the lighting desk gets into the system, either via RNet or DMX itself, they can be dual redundant. So you can split your DMX feed and go into two transmitters, one each side of the building, and that will then feed the wireless mesh. So if one fails, you've still got control. Do you have any wireless control panels to go with it to replace your standard light switch that would have been? Yeah, the, the, the plan is to, uh, to develop, which is not there yet, is to develop an eight channel preset two gang box, which sits on the wireless mesh, so somebody can just replace that, have a power supply, and then that will run. The other big thing we're doing, which we're putting a lot of investment into, is developing a golf ball lamp, places like the Royal Court or Circle Fronts, where they love that sort of bare filament look. That will also be a wireless lamp, which will go into existing fittings and allow to work on the art, me art mesh network. Um, there is all of the connectivity is encrypted, so it's not it's not uh, the same as a computer network where you can see MAC addresses and you can mess about with it. It's actually low level encoded firmware. So once you set the system up via the app, you then leave it and it remains connected regardless of whether it power cycles or whatever. I should also point out for the new build, there's also a wired version as well. So you do wireless, it's more leaning up to the retrofit, where you don't want to rewire the building or change the fabric of the building. If you're doing a brand new build, you just you can add a control line in and put them all on the control line back yeah, to your control. Some people are still a little bit nervous about the wireless technology used for house lighting systems, that's understandable. So the card, the wireless section of the card can be changed for a RS-45 card, which is DMX. So you can just run DMX to each fitting if you want to. Savings this installation has absolutely we so the ICC is an exhibition hall so that's slightly different with the hall for Cornwall we're saving about 70% of their energy for the same light output Simon actually is uh, Simon Crick who's the operations manager has created 8,000 pounds a year in the energy consumption what we do when we do a venue is we survey it first with the with the client we look at the capital expenditure or spending on LED on this system versus the running cost of their existing halogen system in terms of labour, maintenance, <coughs> replacement lamp cost and electricity. And if it doesn't break in break even within year five, then you'd have to question is it a sensible move?